Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to revisit the relief valve, the pressure relief valve. I have a video already of us just showing how to basically hook this up, but this time let's focus on understanding what's happening in the relief valve from a schematic standpoint because this is a really important device out in the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that there is no relief valve on this system because there actually is a relief valve built into here, but what we're going to do so we can understand it schematically and what's happening is we are going to hook up right from our pump pressure here, okay, and you can see that on the schematic diagram. We're going to go into our relief valve. Now, a lot of relief valves have that built-in T, and I talk about this in another video if you've if you've uh, haven't seen it, if you if you've seen it. But what's happening here is this is basically a T. Okay, and there's pressure that will come here and fight the biasing spring, and then the rest of it will just flow through here. Sometimes pressure relief valves have this, sometimes pressure relief valves don't. It really just depends on the make, the model, and where it's being used and how it's being used. But this one actually does have the uh, T built in, so we're going to use that today to get that hooked to. Uh, to show that schematically. So what we always want to do is we want to take our tank port, the one that goes to tank, okay? This will always go to tank. Now schematically this can be deceiving because the tank is always right next to the pressure relief valve. But in real life it is a hose or a pipe or a combination of a pipe and a hose going all the way back to either a return manifold or directly back to tank depending on the size of the system. Now, what we want to do here is we want to take advantage of that internal T. So from this T, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and hook up to the pressure port of the directional control valve. So I click, so I, so I'm bringing it from that T, okay, which sometimes is represented by a dot, sometimes it's not, it's just a T in the actual diagram, and I'm running this over to the pressure port on my 4-3 lever controlled valve. Okay, this is my 4-3 center, uh, spring centered uh, directional control valve. So I'm going from the subplate to uh, my P port right here. Where again, we've talked about this in my other videos about the directional control valve, how uh, the subplate dictates where the actual ports are in real life, not the schematic diagram. The schematic diagram's purpose is just to show you how it's supposed to work. In the real world, you have to dissect that information and apply it, okay? So we'll take our tank up to here. All right. And then we will take our A port. We're going to run this to the cap end and the B port to our blind end. Okay. So now we have our full schematic and you guys can follow along with the schematic diagram and see how we translate what's happening in the real world to our schematic diagram and vice versa because as a technician it is crucially important that we understand how to look at a schematic diagram and translate that in the real world, okay? Because this looks nothing like the schematic diagram for a pressure relief valve. This doesn't look anything like the schematic diagram for a directional control valve, all right? And they can be so different, we have to trust the schematics and we have to learn how to use those. So now that our system is hooked up, let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll see how the pressure relief valve can adjust that max pressure. Now it's hard to see on here, but I know you can see it in the schematic diagram. This is a closed center. So right when I turn it on, I should be going to max pressure, which is going to be set by my pressure relief valve. So you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is right around 600 PSI. So if I loosen up that biasing spring, okay, I can bring that down to 400, I can bring it down to 200, I can bring it up to 700, all right? And all by adjusting that biasing spring, 
okay? And what happens is, because the pump has to create flow, it absolutely always has to create flow, it's creating just enough flow to overcome this biasing spring and send that oil back to tank, okay? So I'll go ahead and adjust this down to let's say 300. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna activate my lever. I just retracted a little bit. I'll push it the other way. My cylinder extends. Hopefully you can see that. Come over here, push it the other way. It's retracting. What's happening in the schematic, because in the real world, schematic diagrams aren't animations. Okay, they're just pieces of paper. They're they're you know two dimensional. All their purpose is is to just m show us how it works. You have to be able to interpret what's actually happening here, what's actually happening here. These things are really important for technicians to be able to understand from our directional control valves to our pressure relief valves. Okay.